G'day mighties, I am Jackaro Toro and on this channel I focus on Australian Aborigines, their languages, cultures, history and so on. And today I thought we would focus on tribal names. It is a fact that all tribes, Aboriginal tribes in Australia, have names. They have a name for themselves eh, and other surrounding tribes may have other names for them. Eh, this is something that Norman Tyndale wrote quite a lot about in his eh, big 1974 book. Eh, and we are going to look at what Tyndale writes. However, here we need to be a little bit careful because he mixes apples and pears, uh, so to speak. Uh, he mixes the names the tribes have for themselves with the names others have for them and with other uh, types of words, as we shall see. So anyway, if we start with Mara, uh, this is the tribe whose language I have studied. They are found in the Port Hedland area uh, along the coast of Western Australia. Uh, we might also note that there is a tribe called Mara Wanga where wanga eh, means language. Eh, and in literature, eh, the second part, wanga, has received different spellings in different places. Eh, Ngara wanga is found further down in Western Australia and inland. So how has this eh, situation come about? And what does Ngara mean? Well, no one can tell me what Ngara means. This is in all likelihood an example of an old tribal name that has lost its original meaning. Uh, so why is it found in two different places? Well, Tribal names found in different places, the same uh, or similar tribal names, is something we find uh, in different parts of Australia. Uh, and Tyndale speculates that this could have come about through tribal drift uh, or movement. Movement of people, obviously. Uh, I would say that we don't know. Uh, but anyway, there are tribal names, the meanings of which no one knows. So in all likelihood, they need to be placed in Tyndale's category of old names. Uh, old names that have lost their meanings. meanings. He also talks about tribal names meaning a uh, man, men, or people. But then he exemplifies with the Western desert groups in Australia's Western desert. He writes that they call themselves Madu or Wadi, two words that mean man. Uh, uh, and that they saw themselves as real men because they uh, circumcised their boys uh, as a rite of passage into adult life. Uh, when the boys are 12, 13 years old, they still do, by the way. Uh, and they contrasted themselves with the people along Australia's west coast that did not practice circumcision, which they called Minma, a woman. Well, this may all be true, but these are not the actual tribal names. 
uh, they had other tribal names for themselves. They saw themselves as real men, but they had other tribal names. So the word for who or what in different uh, Western Desert dialects uh, is used uh, as names for some groups. Uh, the words for who and what uh, with the addition of jara, uh, which is commutative, so having. So this group ha has this word for who or what. This other group has this other word. So two examples here, nyanganya jara and ngaja jara. By the way, in casual speech, these names with jajara becomes just ja, uh, become just jara. Uh, so you delete the first ja syllable. Uh, but anyway, in careful speech, you say the whole thing. When it comes to these two groups, speaking closely related uh, dialects, they have different verbs for to come, uh, and that is what we have here. Uh, this group has one word for to come, this group has another, leading to the names Pijanjajara and Yangonjajara. Uh, but this here, Nyangomara, in northwestern Western Australia, northeast of the Ngara tribe is where they lived uh, originally. They have a name where we have Mada, which according to Tyndale is the same as Madu, a uh, man. He also says that the first part here is an old word for man. So man, man, I wouldn't know if that is the case, that this is an old word for man, though. Uh, in present day, Nyangomada, there is a word Nyanga, uh, meaning who. So this could just as well be the who man, uh, who has this particular word for who. Yes. Uh, and in five areas of Australia, Tyndale writes, uh, we find the tribal names based on the words for yes or no. Actually, usually the word for no. Uh, there are two areas in the non pamanyungan speaking part of Australia, so the top end. And then there are three areas in the Pamanyungan speaking part thrown out uh, or spread out across the continent, as you can see here. So one area around Perth, Nyungar or Nungar uh, speaking groups uh, here in the southwest. So here are three examples. Yuad, Wadjub and Wadan Wadandi, uh, based on the words for no uh, in these three dialects. Uh, around Brisbane, we have the same thing, or similar at least, going on. Brisbane over here. I have never really been to Brisbane. I've just changed flights at the airport a couple of times. Uh, perhaps I should put going to Brisbane on my bucket list. Uh, anyway, here we have the words for no, uh, a little bit extended with an extra syllable in a couple of cases here, Yugambe and Yagera. Uh, and then we have a couple of reduplicated examples where the word for no gets reduplicated. So, kabi kabi and waga waga. Uh, the same thing, reduplication, 
happens on the Murray River in South Australia, so down here. So the word for no is reduplicated. Uh, so here we have names for four tribes, Yoda Yoda, Nari Nari, Laji Laji, and Modi Modi. Yes, uh, this will be all for now, uh, but there is more to say about tribal names in Australia uh, and what they mean. So I will be back in another video. So, see you later.